Welcome to the Canto Curation Tool demonstration. Canto is a generic web-based literature curation tool for use by professional curators, but also, importantly, by the paper authors themselves for community curation. It's fully configurable for use by different organisms. This is the Canto homepage, so on the right we have the documentation, a demonstration implementation, and from here you can download the code and install, configure and install locally for your organism of interest. On the left we have the centrally hosted installations and now I'm going to go to the Pombase installation. Pombase is the model organism database for the fission used Schizosaccharomyces pombi. So, Canto was developed by Kim Rutherford as part of the Pombase grant and it was funded largely as a result of a successful pilot project which demonstrated the willingness of the fission news community to participate in community curation. Um, it's publication centric and each paper is fully curated for all molecular data types to create a blob of data associated with each publication. So, and also, all annotation is attributed to the data curator in the tool. Even if the paper's passed around and curated by different people, individual contributions are recorded. So, from here, the author can identify their papers via the PubMed identifier and start create, curating. In reality, this doesn't really happen spontaneously. So what actually happens? And now I'm going to go to the administrator interface, um, which is non the non-public part of the tool. From here, the curators import the literature corpus for their organism of interest. So for Fission East here, we have 10,000 publications imported. We've triaged them all and identified 4,900 as potentially containing curatable molecular data. Of these, we have 1,400 sessions in progress, of, of which 915 have been fully curated and approved by the curators. So we also, during the triage, identify the author and add a person to the database and then we can assign a paper to a person. So the author then receives an email like so. And we've tried to make this email look as personal as possible. So it comes from a person and it's addressed to a person. And it provides a little bit of information about what's expected, refers to their paper and provides a link to the curation session. So since all papers since 2012, we now send out to the author for first pass curation from Pombase. So clicking on this link will take us to the curation session where we can start curating. So now we're ready to start curating. There are actually two previous screens to get to this point where there's some more background information, links to the help, uh, the author confirms their identity and has the opportunity to assign the session to another member of their lab and we always hope that they will assign it to the person who did the experiments because they always make the best job of curation but invariably at the moment the, the lab heads have a go themselves. So. If um, they continue through those two steps, they'll end up at this page. And Canto provides a very simple step-by-step -step approach to curation, which can easily be completed with no specific training. So the first job is to create your gene list. So you would upload the list of genes from your paper. For this particular session, I'm just going to add one gene, SAP1. The next screen is just to confirm that the correct genes are uploaded uh, as sometimes you get cases where synonyms of one gene are primary names of another gene. But the gene list can be altered or extended at any point. So from here we're just going to continue. So now we are ready to start curating. This paper, the details are here, it's about SAP1, um, which is located at the 
replication fork and involved in the DNA replication checkpoint. There are here some existing annotations for this paper. There are some genetic interactions which were made by already by Biogrid and we import those. So any existing annotation from this paper will be displayed. So we have only added one gene and this is the one that we're going to create. So click on the gene name and start to enter data. So these are the types of data that we can curate. And first, I want to make a phenotype annotation. So I'll select single gene phenotype. This is a leucine search. And I want to make a phenotype annotation to say that SAP1 mutant has reduced growth at high temperature. So I'm going to type reduced growth and see what I find. Looking at the list, reduced cell population growth sounds good because my phenotype does refer to the growth of a population. So I'm going to select this. Now, the ontologies are large and complicated, so the key is to get the user into the ontology at any point which is true for the term, for what they're trying to describe. And then they're shielded from the full complexity of the ontology. But as long as we get them in at the right point, we can then encourage them to drill down. So the first thing they're instructed to do is to check the definition to ensure that it accurately describes their gene. Uh, this is a cell population phenotype in which the cell population growth is decreased relative to normal. Decreased growth may reflect a reduced growth rate or growth that occurs to a lesser extent than normal or both. So we're happy with that. Um, the term we searched is a synonym of this term. And then the second thing we ask people to do is to refine their term selection if possible. So this is the drilling down. And in fact, this term is even flagged here that this is a, a high level term and it should always be possible to choose a more specific term than this one. So the curator then inspects children to see if they can say something more specific. And we can see here decreased vegetative cell population growth, which we'll select because that's correct. This is vegetative grow leg growing cells. And from here, we can also see the exact term that we want, which is decreased cell population growth at high temperature. So we're going to select that. If we get to a leaf node, or even if one of the sibling terms isn't appropriate, the user can suggest a new term. But in this case, we're at the most specific term and it describes what we're trying to say, so we're just going to proceed. The next step is to select the allele and the evidence. So next, for phenotype annotations, we need to provide some supporting data so we need to give the allele name, which in this case is SAP1-48. And we need to choose the allele type, which in this case is mutation of a single nucleotide. And it is T563A. You can actually see there that if the allele has been seen before, then you don't have to actually retype it in, it's remembered. The other thing you have to provide are the expression. Um, some alleles might be overexpression alleles or knockdowns. In this case, it's endogenous and the evidence is just cell growth assay. You can also add condition, which is high temperature, if it's relevant to the experiment but that one is redundant with the term itself. Then we proceed, we've made the annotation and there's the opportunity to provide some additional qualifying information that the curators can capture as annotation extensions, but we're going to 
ignore that for the time being. And we've made a single phenotype annotation. We also want to add here um, the same mutant is involved in the accumulation of DNA damage foci. So, let's see if we've got a term for that. That's a synonym. This is obviously quite a well used term. It's got quite a lot of synonyms. It's obviously described in a number of different ways. It's a leaf node. We don't want to say anything more specific. Um, so, we proceed. Again, add the allele and the evidence, it's the same allele, so just select it, endogenous expression, this time it's microscopy, and we can use a previous condition. So there we've made two phenotype annotations, and we're back to the gene page. So from this paper, I can also make some Go annotations. I can make a cellular component annotation. The cellular component describes the localization of a gene product or a complex that it's a member of. And SAP1 has been localized to the replication fork. So see that term straight away. We can also be more specific for fission yeast closed mitosis, it's got to be nuclear. Um, we don't want a more specific child, so we can proceed. We have opted to only allow Go experimental evidence codes since the author's only curating the results of experiments. So in this case, it's inferred from direct assay. This is um, a place where an optional comment could be added. Uh, for here, the user is prompted for the period or phase when a localization is observed. So we can just add here during mitotic S phase as a comment, and the curators will convert that into an annotation extension. So we've made a Go cellular component annotation. Taking all the genetic interactions into account, we there's, the, there's good evidence that this gene is part of the DNA replication checkpoint process upstream of the signaling pathway, and it's involved in detection of the response. So I'm going to also add um, a process term, DNA replication checkpoint. Again, there's quite a bit of drilling down we can do here because we, the experiments were related to mitotic events and there's enough evidence to say that this is involved in detection. We're at a leaf node, so we can proceed. The main evidence for this is a genetic interaction. So... Genetic interaction, you're forced to say which is the gene that's been interacted with. So we choose a gene, but we only have SAP1 added. So what we need to do here is add the interacting gene, which is CDS1. And then we can proceed. And we've got a go annotation. So the author proceeds until they've annotated all the experiments in their paper. And they can change gene, annotate other genes. Once they've finished, they submit the data to curators. Here, they've got an opportunity to add a message if perhaps there was something that they couldn't curate, any queries they had, anything they weren't sure about. They finish and the session sent. It's now available for the curator who's non-administrator to see in review and these are admin only links and from now on it needs to go through approval and the session needs to be reactivated for anybody to go back in and make edits to it outside of the administrator.
So that's the practical demonstration. So what are our results so far? Well, we get very variable levels of completion. But one of the things we have observed is we very, very rarely get incorrect annotation. We only get incomplete annotation. So once we get a curation session back, it's checked and extended by the curators. And this usually results in a dialogue between the experimenter and the curator and refinement of the session. Um, the curator usually makes the annotations more specific and the researcher tends to prevent any over annotation based on the observations. And the result is really high quality co-curated papers. And it works very well because the researcher's knowledge tends to be in-depth biological, whereas the curators have more breadth and know the ontologies very well. So it's a really complementary approach. We don't currently in Pombase give any attribution on the gene pages, but there are lots of benefits for the researchers. It means their data is publicly available very quickly. And we already know that around 80% of the Pombase users are not fission yeast researchers. So it's really making their data immediately available to the broader scientific community. And it also has helps the researcher to understand the annotation and the ontologies. And then they're better placed to use ontologies like Go in their data analysis or for candidate gene annotation and candidate gene identification. So that's the end of the demo. But if you do want to know any more, you can contact us at Pombase via the Pombase help desk or via the Canto Gmod mailing list.